Howdy, my name is Kayla Vanderford, and in this video, we're going to be talking about English saddle fit. First, we're going to be talking about the parts of the English saddle. To begin with, we have the gullet, which is this portion, which is going to go over the withers of the horse. Then we have the bottom panels, everything that you can see right here and right here is going to be touching the horse. This is very important. And then lastly, we'll be talking about the channel right here, running down the center, the spine of the horse when it's on the horse, down the center of the English saddle. Let's talk about the gullet. The gullet here on the English saddle should match the shoulder angle of the horse. This is important for correct balance, correct fit, and for wither clearance. Wither clearance is a big deal because we don't want the saddle sitting directly on the horse's withers. This will cause rubbing and discomfort for the horse. If the saddle is too wide, the gullet is going to sit directly on the withers. If the saddle is too narrow, the saddle is going to pinch the withers and sit up too high. Ideally, when on the horse with a rider in the saddle, you should have three fingers of clearance between the top of the saddle and the withers of the horse. Next, we will be discussing the panels of the saddle. So on the bottom side, we have these panels. They should not go past the last rib on the horse's back. They also need to be no wider on these sides than the horse's loin muscle. This is very important because we want the weight distribution on muscle and not on bone. Now let's discuss channel width. On the bottom side of our saddle, we have the two panels and in between them, the channel. We don't want our two panels to be so close together that it creates no channel for the horse's spine. We want this to be open so that the horse's spine does not touch it. As we can see with this saddle, I have four fingers in width of a channel all the way down. This creates ample space for the horse's spine to be. On this saddle, we can see I only have three fingers in width across for the channel. This is slightly narrower, but it will still work. We just have to make sure that this saddle fits the horse that it is on. Next, Let's talk about corrective pads. Half pads come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Here is one very classic one. It's wool around the edges and on the bottom, and on the top it can either be a rubber cushion or just cloth. This wool is very breathable and it helps the horse's back stay cool even when it's hot. It's also very cushiony. Here we have another variety of a half pad. This is a gel half pad. It's very squishy and it doesn't breathe quite as well because there's no wool on the bottom to help keep air flowing. Ways that you can use the half pad are to fix minor saddle fit issues and also create cushion for the horse for high impact sports. You will often see this in show jumping because when the rider is on the horse's back and they're going over jumps, sometimes some extra cushion is needed to provide comfort for the horse. Here we can see that the saddle is balanced on the horse's back. The pommel and cantle are at the same height. We can also see that the saddle has four fingers between the pommel and the horse's withers. Ideally, we should have a rider in the saddle to make sure that there are three fingers, even with the rider's weight. This saddle fit is less than ideal because it sits too close to the wither and it does not even have a rider. By adding a simple half pad, we can improve the saddle fit. We can see how this wool half pad works with the saddle to raise it off the horse's back. Keep in mind, half pads can only fix minor issues in saddle fit. In this clip, we can see the back panels and the channel width of the saddle on the horse's back. 
The spine should be untouched all the way up and down the back. When riding, the first and third billets of the saddle should be used. This keeps the gullet down on the withers and the back of the saddle anchored so it does not pop up. Here we can see that the saddle is not past the last rib. Most English saddles will not reach back enough to cause an issue, but some of the larger sizes, like 18 and 19 inch saddles, can end up causing weight to be put on the weaker part of the back. Another thing we can see here is the panel is not sitting past the loin muscle that runs down the back. Through simple palpation, you can feel the loin muscle end and feel where the ribs begin down the horse's side. The rider should be able to fit one hand width between the cantle and their seat. Lastly, let's talk about storing your saddle. Ideally, you have it on a saddle rack like this that's the same angle as your saddle. You want your saddle to rest evenly and not to the side. That way, nothing is changed in the padding. Here we have an example of a bad saddle storage. On this ladder, we can see that nothing is the same shape as the saddle. When I put it down, it's creating pressure points on the inside of the padding which goes right up against the horse. This is not even dispersal of weight of the saddle. Even though it is light, it will do damage over time. So keep in mind when you're storing your saddle to put it on something that has the correct angle and is consistent throughout the whole length of the saddle. I hope both you and your horse can benefit from this short lesson in English saddle fitting. Thanks and giggles.